I'd like to uh, welcome everybody here tonight. Uh, as I don't think we have any visitors, uh, we uh, don't have anybody that I can run off, so that's a, a good thing. We have uh, a lesson tonight that's a little different than some. I don't have a uh, recollection like Ronnie does with uh, 50 years of uh, history to uh, draw from, so uh, you'll have to bear with me. I'm uh, not a normal preacher, as you know, and uh, most of my time is spent uh, repairing machines, as you'll uh, find out uh, is what I do best, maybe. <laughs> so, in Proverbs, we'll turn to 17.6. It says, Children's children are the crown of old men, and the glory of children is their father. And I guess Dan warned me about this. Hold the green button. They told me it was ready. There we go. So, I have a newborn grandchild. For those of you who don't have uh, Facebook, Shaylin Olivia Fo Fa Fa Foster. Shaylin Olivia was born on Thursday, seven pounds, six ounces, to my daughter, Brianna, and her husband, Isaiah, and they're in California. So there we have Shaylin. And so you know that uh, is the fifth grandchild. Most of you all know my other grandchildren, and uh, they're uh, part of them with us tonight, so uh, there was no need to show them. You see them all the time, and, and I appreciate and love every one of them. Next, Proverbs. At the end of that uh, chapter, I found something that uh, I thought stood out to me since I was uh, standing up here tonight. Even a fool is counted wise when he holds his peace. When he shuts his lip, he is considered perceptive. And uh, if you read Abraham Lincoln's version of that, better to remain silent and be thought a fool than to speak and remove all doubt. <laughs> so, so Ronnie don't have to come up here and remember 50 years ago when he used to give uh, spare the rod and spoil the child lessons to his kids and I was about two years old. We'll move on. <laughs> How we re represent our religion, interactions. A lot of times, whenever we're in the world, we do things that uh, we do as Christians that hopefully represent us and people see us as different. And in our actions, we have things that we do. We'll read Hebrews 10, 24, and 25. And let us consider one another in order to stir up love and good works, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some, but exhorting one another so much the more as you see the day approaching, even if Ken's preached. So people will notice whenever we are in the world and we're at work or whatever, and they see us as someone who on Wednesday night we don't stay late. What have you got to do? I've got to go to service. Uh, we need somebody to work Sunday. I can't. I've got to go to service. If, if you do that, people will notice what you're doing, and they'll look at you differently, and you'll be a light to other people. Even if you don't think you are, sometimes people are noticing what you do, and a lot of times they look to people that do that whenever they have different things that happen in their life, as we'll find out later. In 1 Peter 3, 13 through 17, we have suffering for right and wrong. And who is he who will harm you if you become followers of what is good? 
But even if you should suffer for righteousness' sake, you are blessed and not afraid of their threats or, their tr or be troubled. But sanctify the Lord God in your hearts and always be ready to give a defense to everyone that asks for you a reason for the hope that is in you with meekness and fear, having a good conscience that when we defame you as evildoers, those who revile your good conduct in Christ may be ashamed. For it is better if it is the will of God to suffer for doing good than for doing evil. Don't fear doing the right thing because the people that are going to persecute you, they're not going to come out ahead. So whenever we do things, sometimes people look at us different. They make fun of you. They do different things to try to discourage you. Don't look at that as a negative thing. They are uh, representing a fool whenever they do that, and you will be rewarded. Let brotherly love continue. This is Hebrews 13, 1 through 17. Do not forget to entertain strangers. So, for so, for by doing so, some have unwittingly entertained angels. Remember the prisoners as if chained with them. Those who are mistreated, since you yourselves are in the body also. Marriage is honorable among all, in the, the bed undefiled. But fornicators and adulterers God will judge. Let your conduct be without covetousness. Be content with such things as you have. For he himself has said... I will never leave you nor forsake you. So we may boldly say, The Lord is my helper, I will not fear. What can man do to me? Remember those who rule over you, who have spoken the word of God to you, whose faith follow, considering the outcome of their conduct. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Do not be carried about with various and strange doctrines, for it is good that the heart be established by grace, not with foods which have not profited those who have been occupied with them. We have an altar from which those who serve the tabernacle have no right to eat, for their bodies of those animals whose blood is brought into the sanctuary by the high priest for sin are burned outside the camp. Therefore, Jesus also, that he might sanctify the people with his own blood, suffered outside the gate. Therefore, let us go forth to him outside the camp, bearing his reproach. For here we have no continuing city, but we seek the one to come. Therefore, by him, let us continually offer the sacrifice of praise to God, that is, the fruit of our lips, giving thanks to his name, but do not forget to do good and to share, for with such sacrifices God is well pleased. Obey those who rule over you and be submissive, for they watch out for our souls as those who must give an account. Let them do so with joy and not with grief, for that would be unprofitable for you. Christian conduct, that's simply that. Let us Obey the ones that rule over us, and we are lucky to have the people that we have and the offices that we have here to guard over our souls and to keep us on the right path. And whenever we're doing the things that we should do, we'll always be noticed by those in the world. You. How do you see your actions in your walk, these actions in your walk? Are you doing the things that you should do whenever you're in the world and you're walking as a Christian and representing the church, Christ, in you? Are you trying to emulate Christ in yourself? That's, don't be like me. There's an example sometimes of good and examples of bad. Sometimes we learn from examples and we learn from different ways. As uh, I told you, my biggest... Uh, thing that I do is repair machines and during the early uh, years of doing so I developed this habit 
Sometimes whenever you uh, do something, you get better at it. You can do it without thinking. You do it uh, sometimes uh, move on and you uh, can do it more effectively. We have machines that have PLCs that we could look at from the office and we could repair them. And uh, a lot of times uh, operators would call and say, hey, there, my machine's broke. And what we would do is we'd look at it on the computer, see what was wrong with it. Sometimes you'd add a timer to a debount circuit, if you know what that is. A switch is not making, and you fix it from the shop. And I got a habit of laying my hand on it whenever I went out and saying, you're good. I know you're thinking, you can't do that, Ken. I know, and I'll tell you why. This one time, I went out to the machine. It didn't have a PLC on it. I didn't know what was wrong with it. They said, the the mill, it's varying speed. It's, it's going up and down. We don't know what's wrong with it. So I walk over to it and I be healed. Guess what? The Lord works in mysterious ways. He taught me a lesson. I was scared. The machine, it's as long as from there to that end. I'm working on the middle part of it. The whole thing, boom, it shuts down. All of it shuts down. It don't do nothing. I'm thinking, wonder how Moses felt. <laughs> Ken has messed up. Moses could talk to God. Ken, he doesn't have that. We was talking about that this morning. I was thinking about that very thing. I'm not that close to God. I can pray to God through Jesus, and I'm lucky for that because, remember, I just messed up. I'd been practicing this for a little while, and God had a way of making me understand that this is not good. So when the machine cut down, shut down, I thought, Ken's going to hell. Oh no. So I went back to the shop after I got the machine running. Remarkable thing is there was no fuses blown. I couldn't find anything wrong with the machine. We started the machine back up and it ran. Why it cut off? I don't know, that's the scary part. So God has a way of working things that uh, sometimes you don't understand. Sometimes he does things that we can't explain. That was one that really taught me a lesson. So whenever I went back and I prayed, I prayed for God to forgive me. Why did I start? healing machines on my own, I don't know. It just happened. So it developed into that, and it broke me. That was the last time I healed a machine. And the next time somebody says, Ken, and I had fixed a machine, you're the man. I said, no, time out. Ken's not the man. Ken is the one what knows the man. And I can't stand competition to be the man, because to be the man... A lot of the guys in the sports say, you've got to do what? To be the man, you've got to beat the man, right? Ken can't stand that competition. I can't beat the man. And I don't want the competition to be the man. So I would always tell them that later on was, Ken's not the man, and I would give God credit. There's a man greater than me that I can't stand the competition to beat. So there is why that that happen. And we represent our religion sometimes in our words. James 3, 1 through 10. My brethren, let not many of you become teachers, knowing that we shall receive the stricter judgment, for we all stumble in many things. If anyone does not stumble in word, he is a perfect man, able also to bridle the whole body. Indeed, we put bits in horses' mouths, and we and they may obey us, and we turn their whole body. Also, look at ships. Although they are so large and are driven by fierce winds, they are turned by a very small rudder. Whether the pilot desires, even so the tongue is a little member and boasts great things. See how great a forest a little fire kindles, and the tongue is a fire, a, word of iniqu a world of iniquity. The tongue is set among our members that it defiles the whole body and sets on fire the course of nature, 
and it is set on fire by hell. For every kind of beast and bird of reptile and creature of the sea is tamed and has been tamed by mankind. But no man can tame the tongue. It is an unruly evil full of deadly poison. Unless we bless our God and Father, with it we bless our God and Father, and with it we curse men who have made in the similitude of God. Out of the same mouth proceed blessing and cursing. My brethren, these things ought not to be so. There's not much you can say about that. It's uh, be careful what you say. You don't want to talk about men. You don't want to defile men because men were created in God's image. It tells us so right there. And we know that small words can sometimes do great damage. And if you've uh, ever said something that you regret, it's hard to take it back. You can't say something and then say, oh, I didn't mean that, and somebody forget it. A lot of times if you've said it already, it's already out there because you speak from your heart. And if that's the first thing you say whenever you spill it out, it's hard to say that you wasn't thinking about it. So whenever we say words, let's be careful that we don't talk about something that we shouldn't. Let's don't talk about other people. Just be careful what you say and represent Christ whenever we talk to others. Proverbs 21, 21 through 24. He who follows righteousness and mercy finds life, righteousness, and honor. A wise man scales the city of the mighty and brings down the trusted stronghold. Whoever, whoever guards his mouth and tongue keeps his soul from troubles. A proud and haughty man, scoffer is his name. He acts with arrogant pride. Let's not arrogant. Let's not be arrogant in our speech. We know that. We've been taught that our whole Christian life. We don't want to be arrogant whenever we talk to people. We don't want to be arrogant whenever we try to lead people to Christ. That's no way to lead somebody. Whenever you're uh, talking about Christ and sometimes whenever you have a conversation with other people and it becomes religious, there is an elevated nature that some people have whenever you talk to them about something that they perceive as right and you're trying to teach them that that's wrong there is sometimes this nature that it escalates in amplitude if you will and people get angry and sometimes we need to calm that down talk in a manner that we can represent Christ in us. We don't want to make it an argument about Christ. We want to make something that we can teach them. And we're trying to remember that we're leading people unto Christ. We're not trying to represent something that is a fight or a uh, conflict every time we talk about the Bible. So if you do that, there's not anybody going to want to talk to you the next time they see you about uh, things that are religious. Proverbs 10, 1 through 32, that's a long reading and we don't have to go through all of that. But as I was reading it, I couldn't find a good place to stop because all of it is worth reading. So if we don't read all of it, make sure that you go home and you read Proverbs 10, 1 through 32. It's worthwhile. The Proverbs of Solomon. A wise man makes a glad father, but a foolish son is the grief of his mother. Treasures of wicked profit nothing, but righteous delivers from death. The Lord will not allow the righteous soul to famish, but he cast away the desire of the wicked. He who is a slack hand becomes poor, but the hand of the diligent makes rich. He who gathers in summer is a wise son, and he who sleeps and harvest is a son who causes shame. Blessings are on the hand of the righteous, but violence covers the mouth of the wicked. 
The memory of the righteous is blessed. The name of the wicked will rot. The wise in heart will receive commands, but a pranning fool will fall. He who walks with integrity walks securely. He who perverts his ways will become known. He who winks with the eye causes trouble, but a pratting fool will fall. The mouth of the righteous is a well of life, but violence covers the mouth of the wicked. Hatred stirs up strife, but love covers all sin. Wisdom is found on the lips of him who has understanding, but a rod is for the back of him who is devoid of understanding. Wise people store up knowledge, but the mouth of the foolish is near destruction. The rich man's wealth is his strong city. The destruction of the poor is their poverty. The labor of the righteous leads to life. The wages of the sin, wicked to sin. He who keeps instruction is in the way of life. But he who refuses correction goes astray. Whoever hides hatred has lying lips. And whoever spreads slander is a fool. In the magnitude, in the multitude of words, sin is not lacking. He who restrains his lips is wise. The tongue of the righteous is choice silver. The heart of the wicked is worth little. The lips of the righteous feed many. The fools die for lack of wisdom. The blessing of the Lord makes one rich, and he adds no sorrow with it. To do evil is like sport to a fool, but a man of understanding has wisdom. The fear of the wicked will come upon him, and the desire of the righteous will be granted. When the whirlwind passes by, the wicked is no more. But the righteous has an everlasting foundation. As vinegar to the teeth and smoke to the eyes, so is the lazy man to those who send him. The fear of the Lord prolongs days, but the years of the wicked will be shortened. The hope of the righteous will be gladness, but the expectation of the wicked will perish. The way of the Lord is strength for the upright but destruction will come to the workers of iniquity. The righteous will never be removed, but the wicked will not inhabit the earth. The mouth of the righteous brings forth wisdom, but the perverse tongue will be cut out. The lips of the righteous know what is acceptable, and the mouth of the wicked what is perverse. Let your mouths be a fountain of life, and let it feed many souls. This lesson from Ephesians 4.29, we see that we don't use vulgar and profane language. I jumped ahead on my slide, but we can see that. And let no corrupt word proceed out of your mouth, but what is good for necessary edification, that it may impart grace to the hearers. We have one more example that I want to give to you. And what we've talked about, works, speech, it's not the main part of the lesson, believe it or not. The uh, comfort of others is something that uh, thought about a long time. Whenever you uh, have these works that you do and your speech is commendable and you're an example in front of others, sometimes people see you as someone that they can come to. I'm going to give you one example. Whenever I was working third shift one night right before we went on long break, a guy came to me and he asked me, we called him Joe. Joe Joe actually was what his nickname was. Everybody in a manufacturing plant seems to have a nickname. Mine's Hillbilly. I don't know why. 
Jojo came to me, and Jojo was an operator on a machine that I had worked on for some time, and he knew of me. I didn't know him really well. And he came to me, and he wanted to talk about some troubles that he was having in his life. He was having trouble with a stepson that uh, he perceived as, well, he knew that wasn't doing what was right. He had grandkids that he loved, and they were in that home. And he knew that I took care of foster kids, and I worked with DSS, and he saw me as someone that represented himself as a Christian. And he was talking to me about what he could do, what his options were. And during the course of the conversation, JoJo said something about, there's, there's no way for me to get out of this. There's no way out. I might as well kill myself. And you're thinking, Jojo, that's not the right thing to do. And you explain to him how that there's no redeeming from that. There, your life has no chance of being redeemed. Your spiritual life is gone. You will go to hell. Don't do that. And we talked about different scriptures. Whenever I came back from long break, there was somebody came in the office. And they said, did you talk about JoJo? I said, no. They said, JoJo shot himself. My plea for us tonight is that as we are examples to others, sometimes willingly, not willingly, unknowingly, whatever, when you represent yourself as a Christian, you represent someone that somebody can come to. You represent somebody that could help. You represent somebody that, if they're in a time of need, that they can go to you and receive wisdom. Whenever you are looked for that, please make yourself ready to talk about those things to different people. There's people that are hurting. There's people in different walks of life. And we think sometimes that well, we're at church, that can't happen. Unfortunately, we've had it happen close to our church family here in the other building. We had a young boy that was the son of one of our members that killed himself. We had the father took the life of a mother and then killed himself of a young boy that was worshiping with us at the other building. It's sometimes closer than you think. When somebody looks to you, and they look to you for an example, please make sure, positive, that you take that seriously. And one thing that has caused me to look at that is that happened before I had a daughter that was threatening suicide at different times. She had threatened jumping off a bridge. She's threatened cutting her wrist. And I laid it awake at night thinking that I'm going to receive a call. I've received several calls that she was in the hospital at different times. She had done something to try to take her life. That's never good whenever you lay awake and you think of those. So as we are representative of the church, and we as Christians are looked to by other people, let us take that seriously. And whenever someone comes for help, Make sure that you do everything that you can do to help those individuals. We don't want to count off nobody. We don't want to leave anybody out and think they won't do it. Sometimes whenever you think that I'm going to talk to them whenever I see them on Monday, you don't have the opportunity. I know that uh, whenever Brianna was going through those trials, you just saw her baby. That's one of the reasons I showed you that. She's doing much better now. She has a child. She's married to a Marine. She's at 29 Palms in California. And as she was going through her trials, one of the things that I think actually turned her around was Jessica Bellissimo came to me and she said, Ken, I've got this book. Do you talk to Brianna? I said, Some. She calls me whenever she's trying to get out of the hospital or whenever she needs to get somewhere. 
I said, I have some contact with her still. And I tried to leave that open always. And she said, here's a book. Don't worry about the title. The title don't seem good. But this book helped me. And she said, I think it'll help Brianna. Brianna told me she read the book. And then she told me she read it again. She said the book really meant a lot to her. So whenever we look at somebody else, we see somebody on Facebook that's hurting, let's make sure that we try as Christians to do everything that we can to help those that are hurting, those that are in need. Don't ever count out the fact that one little thing that you do, it might be as simple as giving somebody a book, can change the course of their life. It might be a comment. It might be something that you have no idea that you've done. But you have been an example to them, and you have changed the rest of their life. So what do we say is what we've talked about. Now, this hadn't been a uh, lesson that necessarily was one to lead us to Christ, but we've talked about things that we can do. The plan of salvation is on the board. You've heard lessons before. Everybody that's here has been here before. You've heard lessons. Ronnie gave an excellent one this morning about hearing, believing, repenting, confessing our faith in Christ Jesus, being baptized, and being faithful unto death. If you have need of that or you have a need of repentance because you have done something that you shouldn't do and you need the prayers of the church and you want to change your course of life and you've already been baptized into Christ, you can pray with us and we'd be happy to pray with you as together we stand and sing.